What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we continue our foray through Splendid, Texas. And so I guess we're just gonna go to bed for right now. I spent a little bit of time reorganizing inventory, swapping out weapons. I gave everybody like the little carbon batons or whatever, instead of them having baseball bats, just move things around a little bit, optimized and all that fun stuff. You know what I mean, let's go! It looks like we only had a 53 morale change today. Strangely enough, Strangely enough, I thought we brought back more than that, but I guess we did not. It's when you make multiple runs that you get a bunch of morale, so it's all good. Tweedle time, I beg your pardon for intruding, but I wanted you to have something. Here, I think this might help. Sorry I didn't get them to you sooner, I just wanted to give them only to you. Is there are a lot of antibiotics. Where exactly did you get these? They were in my bag when I left the house where we met. I'd taken them from the looters camp before they chased after me. I swear I didn't steal them from any supplies there. I had to make sure you had something in case in case someone you or some in case someone let you get bit. I would never let that happen. Nothing bad can happen to you. I'm not sure what I'd do if it did. Uh, this lady is being a little bit weird. Let's see. I appreciate the gesture, but we're all on this stick. I don't want to make her mad, though. She seems like she's kind of crazy a little bit. She, did her facial expression change? Because she seems like she has crazy eye now. She didn't have crazy eye before. This is unfortunate. I'm fine. I'll be all right. Thank you for looking out for me. Of course. You mean everything to this place. Fiona looks at you and smiles shyly a moment, opens her mouth to say something else, then blushes and looks away. I should go. I'll talk to you later. It appears as though we might be able to parlay another freebie in here somewhere. Hey, I have another suggestion if you're looking for places to loot. There's this out-of-the-way mansion not far from San Angelo that seemed pristine. Something about it felt too perfect. Real eerie. I didn't want to risk it alone, but I'd go back there if somebody was watching my back. What was eerie about it? It was like nothing ever happened, like the sprinklers would come on at any moment or a minivan full of kids would roll out for a soccer game. There was no sign of looting, no dead that I could see, but my intuition told me to run. Sounds suspicious, but worth noting. Let's check it out. Do my part, I'll see you later. I know that's not what it said. I'm so sorry, Tweedle Time. My stomach is hurting something fierce today. I get an ulcer from time to time and I think it's acting up. What do you think I should do? Go ahead and take the day off. Thank you for putting your trust in me. I promise I'll rest up and get be careful and get better so I can help with whatever you need. I won't let you down, I swear. This lady's starting to make me feel a little bit nervous. Starting to make me... She's a little bit clingy. She's a little bit clingy, and I'm not down with that noise. I don't think you need to go stand over there or something. We have separate lives, and we are uninvolved with one another. Our spheres do not collide. What's up, Max? Still hanging out being bugged? Yeah, I figured. Let us continue. So where did he want us to go? It was in San Angelo. Where's San Angelo? I can read a map. San Angelo. It was over here. Oh, it was a mansion in San Angelo. Okay, well, he said something eerie told him to run, so I want to check that out, obviously. Like, why would we run away from that? That sounds super awesome. Let's go have a look. We also need, like, more storyline stuff to happen. I bet I haven't uncovered a bunch of stuff. Let's go look around up and in here for locations. I bet there's something that I've missed up here. We're going to kind of have to go, like, crossways along it. I think, and then we'll come down this way, and then like back over to right here, just in case we missed it. But nope, we didn't miss it because it was never thrown. Alright, so up at the mansion, let's see what's going on in here. Is it a mansion of Danson? If it's a mansion of Danson, of Charles Manson, then that would be unfortunate. So there's that in front of the way. We're going to have to look for a back way through. Nothing so far. So how do we get in there? Somebody's not coming in to like box us in or anything, are they? Okay, fantastic. I don't feel like being boxed right now. Neither packaged up and shipped nor punched in my ear. I would prefer to stay away from that for the time being. I don't see any entrances. Yes, I see precisely zero entrances. Hmm. Something told you to run, eh? Well, looks like a coke dealer's house. Seriously, that the big garish statue with the roundabout in the front and everything. Looks like Scarface. Oh, there's a door in the back right there. Looks like Scarface is about to come out and greet us. Some kind of, like, large caliber weapon. A white suit, obviously. Collar parted to show off the chest hair because, hey, it was the 70s and that's what we did back then. We showed off our chest hair. I wasn't there, but that's what I assume. I see a lot of pictures with a lot of chest hair from back then, so I'm figuring. Hair was definitely in vogue. I watched a documentary on the disco period, and they had this guy who's like worked at a pizzeria for like 50 years. Like he got a job at the pizzeria when he turned like 17, and he still works there to like this day. And it was, I think it was in Miami somewhere. And he was just talking about like, 
he said something along the line. He was talking about their habits back in the day when they used to like go out to like the discotheques and stuff to dance. And he was saying something about the fact that they would work. Oh, that's not good. Where did you come from? I'm going to close this door real fast, okay? I don't know if that's going to stop you, but I figured I'd give it a go. Got three gallons of gas. I mean, either way, we just got a ton of gas out of this place, so cool. Treat it like my full beanie tamale and give me all kinds of gas from this place, so that's good. I had a tamale last night. It was really, really good. Actually, it was kind of like mid-range. It was middle range. It was a middle range tamale. It was good, but it wasn't amazing. I take that back. I would have rather gotten the fajitas, but you know. I was in the mood for, like, actual Mexican food, so I jumped in there for tamales. It was pretty good. I might have put too much hot sauce on it. Is what it I think I actually smothered the flavor. Luckily, they didn't make the classic mistake. A lot of people, when they make tamales, they're way too dry. And you're just like, mmm, these don't taste amazing. They're so dry. They're so dry right now. My mouth feels like it's being invaded by sand. But no, they were actually, they were moist and they were good. We got some tennis rackets? Okay. I guess that's cool. I don't know what we need tennis rackets for, but I guess I'll take them. I'll probably go around to the front because that zombie's waiting for us around the back and I don't want to make too much of a racket as we knock our way into this place. However, stabity stabity, stabity stabity, look in the cavity. Don't come any closer, I know how to use this. You here to rob me, rape me, infect me, talk, damn it. Ask yourself, the <laughs> no, I'm not going to go with that one, I don't want to escalate. I didn't know there was anybody here, I'm not here to hurt you. I don't believe you. I don't even know what's going on in the world, but I can tell you this. I'm not trusting anybody who just barges into my house. To be fair, I walked into your house. There was no barge involved. I'm from a shelter, and we're looking for survivors. A shelter? Aren't those run by the military? You don't look like a soldier to me. I'm not. We're a small group of survivors holding out in a school. Small group? Surely there's some areas that have restored order by now. If anything, it's gotten worse. How is that possible? Somebody in authority has to be alive. Somebody has to be coming. I've been waiting for over or I've been waiting for it to be over for weeks now, and you tell me there's nobody left? No, I can't believe that. I wish it weren't true. This is all because of that disease, isn't it? You're not carrying it, are you? I don't want to get infected. It's not like that. You don't catch it through the air. Still, I don't wanna keep your distance. You don't have it if you've unless you've been bit by one of the corpses walking around out here. What are you talking about? I thought that was a rumor. That can't be. I don't believe it. Do you take me for an idiot? Why do you think there's nobody left? Most of them are dead and hunting the living. Alright, so... Let's say I believe you. You're looking for survivors? What's in it for me? I don't want to end up in a place that's worse than staying here by myself. I have supplies. I have a secure property. Assuming you've actually been taking care of your group, why would I want to be part of it? How long do you think you can hold out? Weeks? Months? Then what? Alright, you've made your point. I'm not 100% comfortable with leaving my house, but if no one's coming, I guess it's the next best thing. I'm Sandy Doubleday, but that's not important right now. Let's get these supplies packed, check the generator for fuel, hit up the bathroom for toiletries, and check our gear before we hit the road, shall we? Alright, follow me, Sandy. Well then... Wait, what? Oh look, we found another buggy place. Let me see if I can work my way through this here. Maybe it's just when you cross the door, it's doing the event again? I don't know. We'll do it a couple more times. Hopefully it doesn't bug out. When we had this happen before, the game bugged out shortly thereafter, which was very, very unpleasant. And so, actually, I think the cheese wheel weighs like a million tons. So, for right now, the cheese shall stand alone. What song is that from? The cheese stands alone. It's Hi-Ho the Dario. Isn't that the name of the song? I don't know the name of kids' songs anymore. I don't have kids. Neither do I sing kids' songs very often. Except for Mare's Eidos. I sing that song all the time because it's awesome. If you ever saw The Cell, too, you can never hear that song the same way. I liked The Cell. The Cell was a good movie. I enjoyed it. I like virtual worlds and stuff containing virtual worlds. Because, you know, escapism and all that. What was it here that we couldn't carry? Just extra forks? Alright. Well, I guess we'll fork that idea for later. Let's see here. We'll take that. We might be wearing a bit too much, but back door is locked. This place does not look safe at all. That glass door right there, people are coming straight through that thing. I can promise you that. I'm surprised she hasn't been hit, though. Maybe she's just, like, so far out in the country that nobody's bothered with her. Medicine cabinet. She's got condoms and a bunch of other stuff. Why would you keep condoms in the bathroom? Unless you have sex in the bathroom a lot. Condoms seem like they go in the bedroom in the nightstand. But we come across a lot of people around here that have condoms in their medicine cabinets. I'm like, Why? Like, then you gotta walk all the way across the house when the mood strikes, and every single moment you're leaving somebody cooling. You know, you don't want that happening. You want it to be nice and hot. You gotta keep it sizzling. 
And so you need to be like right there, close at hand. I don't know, life advice with Splattercat or something. I wouldn't put, that's way down the hall. You gotta go all the way down and around the corner. The bedroom's right here, assuming. So I don't, what, they got a pool table? Hell yeah. What I always thought would be awesome is if there was a pool table in the middle of a pool. Like I always thought that that would be super awesome. So it was a literal pool table. But you would have to, you'd have to rig it up so either it was waterproof. Like you could get it leveled perfectly fine, I think. But I think it would definitely be one of those luxury goods that you wouldn't see too many of. You would have to call a specialist whenever it needed to be repaired. That's the truth. I like your table. You have a very nice glass table, although it would get smudgy too quick, and that would annoy me. So let's go back out of here and see if we can escape, although it's going to make me go the long way around in it. All right. I like the way they hid the door in between all the trees. I didn't say to go into combat, so I don't know why that just happened, but sure. Why not? Additionally, there doesn't seem to be like a whole lot of competition in between the condom companies in this world. I'm not trying to be overly specific right now, I'm just saying. It seems to me as though the condom competition is very light, like they might be risking monopoly laws right now. They, they might get themselves into trouble with the, with the government, so they may want to get on top of that. I want to go see Chappie. I haven't seen Chappie yet, and I want to go see it because I enjoy both robots and everything by... Is his name Blomkamp? Is that how you say it? I don't know how to say his name, but either way, I've enjoyed all of his movies so far. Although, I get the feeling that Neil Blomkamp, or whatever his name is, is a big Tau fan. That's the thing that I've gotten from all this. Is I'm pretty sure he plays Tau. But still, I want to go see Chappie because it looks like it's going to be awesome. Anytime there's a movie with a robot with a bling chain and a rifle, I'm just like, well, we're going to see this movie. Let me shell out the wallet here. Let me break this thing on. Actually, I don't carry a wallet. I carry a money clip because, you know reasons. I don't know why I carry a money clip. I just do. I like money clips better. They look cool. When you whip out a money clip, people are like, wait, is that a money clip? That's like late 70s, early 80s of you. are like, yup. It has a shell casing on it too. <laughs> Somebody made it for me. So it's like a, it's a silver, it's like, I don't know if it's actually, it's, I think it's just like brushed polished steel or something. And then on top of it, a friend of mine cut the, the ending off a of 45 caliber brass and welded it on there. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. I got it as a present. Got it as a present and I use it now and it makes me happy. The upscale shopping plaza. Winter's emergency shelter. Let's go check this place out. How does that sound? We're already loaded up and ready to rock so we can have a look. See what's in here. I mean we haven't checked all the shelters just yet but this one might have something for us. Zombies it looks like. Just sort of like scout out the lay of the land for right now. I really would prefer not to dig into a location like this and end up fighting zombies for the next decade. So if you could take it slow and like not make a lot of noise, that would be fantastic. Because the last time we went to a shelter, we ended up getting into a firefight with the military, which called over like all the zombies. And then it took us forever. And I ended up bailing out in the end because there's just too many zombies. Like I got bored. Like I physically cannot kill any more zombies today. I'm just, I'm tapped out right now. I'm tapped out. I need either AoEs or we need to speed this process up a little bit. Another one bites the dust. Probably try and clear these all out from behind the gate, but I think this might be one of the last shelters that we have to investigate. Good. That's what I was hoping would happen right there. I'd be able to take them both out. We'll check the bodies for any loot or anything else in just a minute because we're all full up anyway, so we're going to have to go back to Splendid. What I'm trying to do right now is clear this place out as carefully as possible. Without waking any of these little turds up. I love the word turd. The word turd has always made me laugh my entire life. If somebody uses the word turd, like, while they're angry, it makes me laugh every single time. Because it's just, like, the most ridiculous sounding word. Like, they say that the funniest comedic sound is a K. But, frankly, the word turd, for some reason, always makes me laugh. I don't think it's immaturity, either. It's just something about the composition of the word that's just, like, funny. It's funny in a way that most other words are not funny. Maybe it's just me. I'm not sure. And that's going to be the label of this episode. If I miss out on that, it's going to be a giant crying shame. Why the shame is crying. It got dumped or something. I don't know. So where's the zombie at that we're looking for? Please don't do that shouting thing right now. If you do that, it'll make me upset. It'll make me have to hit you with this bat. I was going to hit you with the bat anyways, but it'll make me hit you more with the bat. So there it is. I'll probably go finish this guy off real fast. There it is. I'm really liking these batons, by the way. They're getting the job done, and that pleases me. Don't miss. There. We, you can actually tell if you're going to miss or not, because there's a slight delay in the animation if you're not going to miss. If you're going to hit, it actually like lines up the next animation in a different way. I've noticed it as I've been playing. As I've played the game for the last like 700 hours. 
There we go. And that combat, I'm just going to sort of weave through here. So, like, once we come back in the next episode, we can essentially just regroup and come back. Hey, I think we're going to have to fight this one right here. It's okay, though. We've got the AP to do it, so. You missed, man. What did you miss for? See, now i got to rely on Troy, which is always sort of a dubious plan. Yep, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Troy just couldn't... Oh, there's multiple zombies in here. They're coming out of all of the tents. I guess you could say that this combat just got intense, or I guess out tents. Out tents would be the one that I would go for if I was trying to land the joke right now, but if they had all come out of random spots while we were in the tent, that joke probably would have worked a lot better. But you know what I mean, intense. <laughs> It's punny because we're fighting intense. Let's go over to this side. 100% of damage done. Well, I guess. Madam, I'm going to need you to cease, desist, and also... Wow, that one's got a different animation. That's a little weird. Well, now he's going to join the same animation as everybody else. The deadass animation. He's like, you gave me deadass? Why? I had a friend that used to do that. He'd punch you in the ass and give you deadass. I always felt like it was just a way for him to get his fist near your ass because that seemed like the sort of thing he'd be into. But, I don't know. He's always giving you ass bruises. He'd be punching you in the ass. He'd be like, ah, dead ass. No. Why? I also hated Dead Leg. Dead Leg was a terrible game. It sucked growing up male. Constantly punching each other and always having, like, endless tests of bravado. My God, half the time I'm surprised we survived it. More swipes right here. I've told the stories of the kind of shit we used to do in high school. And seriously, I'm really surprised we made it out of that whole, like, debacle without serious, serious spinal injuries. It was a threat. A threat. I almost got my friend run over by it. I'm gonna I'm put this in perspective. As a retaliation, I jump-kicked my friend into the street one time. Just jump-kicked him into the street. It was a retaliation. Don't judge me. He hit me first. Anyway, I, it looks like he had a good vest on him, and I'm a little bit disappointed about the fact that he didn't. Lots of dead folks around, so if you're in the market for some dead people, I think this would be the place to look. There's got to be a college around somewhere that needs these bodies so that they can study them. Take a look at them. Chop them up in a anatomy class. Anatomy class was always weird because they have, like, big buckets of body parts. At least they did at my school. They had buckets, like, of body parts. Like, they would say, go get the arms out of the closet. And they weren't talking about going and getting like 9 millimeters. You went into the closet and there was a bucket of human arms. I'm like, wow, that would be really, really morbid. But I'm afraid to make jokes or anything right now because the teacher said he'd kick me out if I made any jokes. And so, well, not me specifically. But on the first day, the teacher was like, hey, if I catch any of you making inappropriate jokes with any of the corpses, I will kick you out of class and I will seek an expulsion. I was like, oh, well, I just didn't want to take chances. I mean, there's lots of jokes that you can make when you walk into a room full of arm buckets. At the same time, there's buckets and buckets and ducats and ducats of arms here. I mean, there's all kinds of rhyming and fun stuff you can do. I think that I made a bad decision right there. Let's line up real fast. But yeah, there was a bucket full of arms. There's a bucket full of legs. There's torsos and heads and all kinds of crazy shit in there. It was a little bit wild. And there was the body closets where the bodies were like, actually like full bodies for when you were doing... Like the big old dissection things when you had to de-skin people. Anyways, they had, I know this is probably, you have to do this in college, so I'm just letting you know. You're going to have to take anatomy classes or something if you're involved in most sciences, but. Yup. Kind of wild. Kind of wild. I actually ended up dropping it because I didn't need it eventually, but yeah, they had like a body closet where there was like human bodies like hanging up and stuff like in these little like bags. It was... Definitely kind of like the setting you would look for for a horror movie of some kind. Oh, dibs on their stuff. They've got ice cream. Here in the United States, ice cream is called dibs. They have like, the, they're called, they're basically bonbons. That's all that they are. Here in the United States, they have these little bonbon things where they're little ice cream candies covered in chocolate called dibs. Therefore, that's why I said, oh, there's candy when he said, I've got dibs on that thing. And I was like, there you go, dibs on the thing. I love dibs. They're delicious. They come in these little canisters and they run out way too fast. There's got to be, like, a data item or something in here that, like, leads us somewhere. Because we've hit all of the government agencies so far, and they're all gone. Like, there's nothing left. And there's no real explanation as to how this infrastructure fell apart. Like, zombies are not that big of a threat if they're the slow kind. If they're the fast kind, I could definitely sympathize and be like, oh, yeah, you're done for. But with what we've been up against so far, it's just, like, I have a hard time believing that small, like groups or even moderately sized groups of zombies that are slow would ever be able to make it past like a government barrier it looks like maybe somebody rammed the barricade 
and burned out the car like they shot it up possibly. But even then with the barricade down, I don't know. They said in some of the information items that the military was having trouble aiming for the head or something like that. Which, they don't move that quick. I mean, I'm not an expert marksman, but I'm okay with a gun. Like, I fire, I grew up firing rifles and nailing a headshot on a zombie that's kind of moving. I guess maybe you'd be a little bit panicked, though, too, and there'd be nerves and stuff like that. We should grab those mushrooms that are on the outskirts of town before we do anything else. What did we turn in? We turned in, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. So I guess we must have finished the... I think we finished the science lab. I think that's the achievement that you get for completing all the upgrades to the shelter, which means we have to be somewhere near the end of the game, right? We gotta be getting there. We've created a lovely little home right here, and so now we just need like a catalyst to finish this thing off. Which beyond that though, I can't tell you. Yeah, everybody's done. Can we even build anything else? Yeah, we're we're finished. We've done everything. There's nothing left. The mechanic, we could put an emergency tank on the car. So maybe have her work on that. Agro Moss can help out with... Did I ever get around to making a suppressed MK5 so we could use guns on zombies? Because we have the ammo to do it, so I think we should probably do it. Can you only do it once? Oh, it's ta you can only build one gun at a time? That's a little odd. Alright, well, lock and load. I'd rather be prepared than dead later on, so take all the stuff that we have. And if you've got the time to upgrade it, take the time to upgrade it. Other jobs you can take, guard duty, sure. Karen Landy, can you do anything over here? Yeah, another spaz, I'm, I'm sorry, another combat shoddy. Ryan Michaels, or Ryan, yeah, Ryan Michaels. Self-defense, maybe. Melina Guzman, she has chemistry that she can do, so she's been leveling up her science a little bit. She can actually make antibiotics and bullets. I think that I should more than likely put her on... So you need a lot more science skill in order to make those bullets, but we can make small caliber rounds right now, which is pretty cool. Oscar Guzman. I'm going to have you work on the emergency tank as well. Davis. Maybe make... Another later... Uh, yeah, another Mar MS4. That's fine. That works out. I'd like to lock and load just in case we have to like protect this place. And then on this side, maybe get going with some antibiotics or something. But that seems okay. I mean, we don't have a ton of stuff to do, but... How many antibiotics do you get out? It says 60 hours, so my assumption is you must get a lot of antibiotics out of the situation. I'm not sure. Let's go get those mushrooms, and then we'll break off the episode. Yeah, it's a wonder. It is a wonder. But yeah, get ready for that in college. If you're ever going to take anything related to science or biology, you're going to end up taking anatomy eventually. And that's going to be a fun one. That body closet still weirds me out to this day. It shouldn't, but it weirds me out. Weirds me out. I never had, like, a thing with dead bodies. Like, eh. It doesn't, like, freak me out. It's just the fact that they're just, like, hanging there. That's the oddest part is that they're just kind of, like, eh. Like, up in there. Almost like furniture or something. We had problems one time. You had to saw through a skull. And halfway through the skull the the saw kept getting it kept getting stuck we had to bisect it through the center and this the well not through we had to go it was a side profile or something like that i don't really remember it's been a while but we had to saw a skull for some reason or a human head so that you could bisect it and study the brain or whatever and anatomy classes pride themselves on you know that sort of stuff and the saw kept getting stuck and eventually the instructor came over and looked inside the mouth and the guy had prosthetics all inside of his jawline that nobody had noted when he donated his body and the saw couldn't get through the, the steel or whatever they were, prosthetics, the carbon prosthetics or whatever they were. They were tough because a uh, bone saw wasn't going through them. It was wild. Anyways. I called this meeting to discuss a potential health threat to the shelter. As of the last day or so, several people have come down with a nasty case of pneumonia. From all appearances, it appears to be a bad strain of strep causing this flu. Anyone who has caught it has experienced a high fever, chills, coughing, and lethargy. They're unable to stand, much less carry out their duties. If this starts spreading to anyone else, we're going to have a hard time running this place. So how do we deal with this? From what I've read, quarantine's the only way to do it. We might not be here if someone had done that to the first people to come back from the dead. If you think we should do this another way, I'm willing to consider it. Strep is a bacteria. If we really want to knock this out, we need to kill it before it spreads. Let's use some of our antibiotic supply to kill it in anyone with flu symptoms. I know antibiotics are important, but we need to nuke this flu before it kills our ability to remain effective. If I prefer we use antibiotics to help people as soon as possible, unless you think there's a better way. I think we need to use our antibiotics to treat the healthy. Why are we saving them just for infected people? Start treating this flu with antibiotics immediately. Let's nip this in the bud before it gets worse. How do you think we should resolve this? He's got the doctor on his side. 
since he's got the doctor, it looks like it's a no-brainer. We should just go for the antibiotics since we can make our own. It looks like this is a pretty cut well decision. The votes are going to go that way anyway, so yeah, let's go for it. The decision is to dedicate antibiotics to the sick to promote a speedier recovery and less of a chance of spreading the flu. I'm worried about our antibiotic supply, but at least you're doing something. Good call. We need to treat this as soon as possible. I'm glad you're worried enough to give these people access to antibiotics. It really shows you value their well-being. Great, a proactive decision is just what we need right now. It shows strong commitment by the leadership here. That concludes the meeting. Let's hope nobody else gets sick. Okay. Seven disagree. So yeah, that was basically a win. It was a pretty good win for us. Just talk to Davis. Doesn't seem like there's much in the way of news coming in. Be nice to know if help is coming. Man, when this is all over, I'm going to get that boat, find my ex-wife and my kids, and just take them on the vacation of their life. What about you? Any plans for when we get out of this? Wish I had your optimism. Not always easy, right? Yeah, I know back in Menard, I thought I'd never get out of this. But I did. And someday we're all going to get out of this too. Thanks, I needed to hear that. Sure, anyhow, thanks for the chat, and I'll see you later. I've settled in, and I've taken a look at what we need to work with here, and frankly, this place could use a bit more organization. Mr. Cray explained that major decisions are put to a committee. As a former city councilwoman, head of the PTA, and vice president of National Family Organizations, I feel it's my duty to apply my experience for the benefit of everybody here. Okay. Well, good. I'll make a checklist of the points I think need to be addressed here and get back to you. I think you've all done an adequate job with the place so far, but there's always room for improvement. I look forward to it. I'll talk to you later. Can I talk to you about something? Yeah, so I don't think we should be taking women outside of the school. When this thing is all over, the females here are going to be needed to give birth to new babies to repopulate the earth, and the men need to protect them. I'll definitely try to keep them out of harm if you go in their place. Oh, well, right then. Thanks for cooperating. I'll see you later. Okay, well, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in future episodes. Take care out everybody, and as always, I do.